Hey guys, welcome back to William Wire's Old Iron. Coming to you today from William Wire's Paint Booth. <laughs> well, it's been pretty hectic around here. I had some more plumbing issues. I had to rip up the tile in my bathroom, put down a new subfloor, lay new tile, and uh, it's pretty involved and pretty intense. And for an old guy like me, and I've been out looking at uh, crafting jobs, and meeting with clients, and you know, I've just been a little too busy to make YouTube videos, but here we are. Let's take a look and see how we got to this point. Hey, welcome to Rat Rod. My name's Waylon Wire, and don't ever do what we do here on this channel. Yeah, it just seems like it goes on and on around here. Uh, but right now, let's just let's just get current. Yeah, the truck's blown all apart again. You have to put it together and take it apart so many times. And uh, well, I just dread taking it apart because it's got everything fitting, but you know, the door gaps and all that. But Harmon, you know, he's got me drilling these little holes, these little alignment holes. I always just marked them around here, you know, the hinge with the black marker. And yeah, you can get real close, but when you drill a hole, it's a certain size and you know, eighth inch drill. And then uh, when you put that drill back in there and got it set, boy, it's exact, you know, you got it right back where you had it. So everything, Everything lines up, but um, he uh, got up on that roof. I wish he didn't ever got up there because he found cracks in that paint on top and some uh, lousy prep from the previous body shop that did this work. And you know, he showed me a thing. He's got this uh, wax and grease remover stuff. I don't see it sitting here. I don't know exactly. Surface, maybe this is his surface prep. He calls it wax and grease, but that's it. Anyway, he uh, he said, see that crack? And I'm going, yeah, and there was a little crack about, I don't know, about an inch and a quarter long or so right in here. And he said, now watch this. And he wiped that over it. And as soon as it got wet, there was four or five, maybe even six little tiny little quarter inch cracks on both sides that just showed up. He said, see what, I, see what I'm finding? And so... He got up there, and that cost us a couple of days. And, yeah, he just keeps finding stuff, and and he don't let nothing slide, boy. You know, this truck is it's going to be a total, a total restoration. It's already been a frame off, you know, because um, this frame was replaced. So now there, it's total restoration. There is... I didn't think that's what was going to happen, but there's zero rust in this truck. Absolutely nothing. This is the kind of stuff that Harmon points out. Now, he don't let anything slide. Did you see this yellow tape he's put on there? He put that on there for me, and it comes down to a little point there, and that's his pointer. And he's showing me that there's a little tiny quarter-inch speck of rust there that he wants me to grind out and get rid of it, and then he will... Uh, I've got to go back however far the rust goes, but that's uh, that's minute, you know. Now yeah, that's quarter inch long, but that's he's that's the perfectionist that he is. He wants he wants that all fixed. So uh, you can imagine uh, what he's done on this truck. I mean, <laughs> that he does that kind of work everywhere on this truck. Everything is is just totally. I don't know. I don't know. He's just very meticulous. I can't even describe it. But it's been a long time, man. But all the uh, all the body work's done. Almost everything is primed and guide coated and blocked and primed again and guide coated again and blocked some more. And he keeps finding he'll find a little low spot and. Oh, it just goes on and on. That bedside's just been driving him crazy because it's a little wavy. Nah, I mean, you won't ever see it on the truck, but it's actually just like the other one. I mean, it came from the factory that way. You know, they were, when they stamped that gas door in there, well, it, it tweaked the metal a little bit, you know, and that's just, these trucks were notorious for, for not, uh, for not having good body lines and stuff like that. Uh, that's just how they came. 
um, I'm okay with that. You know, this is this truck's not going to SEMA. Although it probably could. <laughs> well, no, it could go to auction though. It could go to Barry Jackson when he's done. <laughs> I don't know. Not that it's worth a whole lot. It's just it's worth more to me than it is to anybody else. But oh yeah. But anyway, I'm just showing you that's the level of work that Harmon does, and and I'm grateful. You know, it's costing me a fortune, but I'm grateful that that's the man that he is, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate him, and uh, things have got to change in this shop. I've got to get that dozen out of here because we've got to start jamming stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to. I hang some plastic. Oh, I did not want to paint in my shop. Oh, it's bad enough as, as it is. There's primer dust everywhere. I mean, you can see it. It's just horrible. But that you can clean up. But man, I did not want to paint in my shop. I did not want to have overspray everywhere. And the deal is, the guy who's going to paint this He's the kind of guy, Harvey says, he'll tell you what you want to hear, Ken, you know, and because what he'll do is he'll take a rig in and he'll, he'll tell somebody three weeks and then it's three months. And, uh, but I have to go to him. I have to have him do the painting because he will charge me way, way less than anybody else because he knows that he don't have to do anything. He knows Harmon's work. He used to be Harmon's painter. And now he's got his own shop and may have had his own shop, you know, years before too. But but he, he was he painted for Harmon for a long time. And then when Harmon retired and sold his shop, Jerry opened his own place. But I have to take it to him because, as I said, he knows Harmon's work. And he knows when Harmon pre preps a truck, he don't have to do anything but paint it. And if I take it any, anywhere else, they won't know that. And they're going to charge me more because of incidentals that happen, but things they'll find. But, but when Harmon preps it, there will be no incidentals. They're not going to find anything. And he knows that, so he charges me accordingly. You know, last year when I caught this thing on fire, was that last year or year before? Now we're in 2024, so, so two, two springs ago. I caught this thing on fire and I had to get another hood and uh, you know I took it down and it's usually at least at the minimum 500 bucks a panel just to shoot it if everything's ready to go psst, psst, 500 bucks at least most places probably more than that but he charged me I mean he charged me 340 bucks to shoot that hood because he knew Harmon prepped it so that's why this truck has to go to him. Now, I did not want to spray in my shop, did not want to paint in here, did not want to overspray on everything, like I have primer dust on everything. But, oh, well, let me back up. So initially I was going to haul all these things down and have him jam everything, uh, the doors, paint the back side of the doors, uh, back side of that, inside of that bed panel, back side of that fender, um, bottom side of the hood i guess and uh yeah and then we were going to bring it all back and put it all together and then take it down and have it painted but the thing is i need my shop man i need this lift really bad i got something going on with, uh, with the work truck and victor's going to be here on the 27th he's going to start grafting and this year he's flying instead of driving so he's going to need that truck and it's making some kind of noise i i'm not sure if it's a u-joint or or I don't know what it is exactly, but it's making a noise that that I need to get it on the lift and investigate. So I need this truck out of here. So I cannot take all these pieces down and have that guy jam everything because it could be another three months and my truck's still sitting here. So I'm gonna paint it myself. Um, I can paint good enough to 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 jam these doors and and whatnot. Um, I, I I know I joke about it a lot and how much I love rust and all that, but I do own a paint gun, but shh, don't tell anybody. It's a well-kept secret. And I would not want to ruin my reputation, but I do own a paint gun. And I can paint good enough 
to paint these doors, the inside of the doors. I mean, for crying out loud, you never see this part, you know, and you never see the bottom. And the only part of the inside you'll see is this strip right here because there's a carpet that goes on here. And then the door panel goes on here and all you see is this little piece here. So maybe I won't screw that up, that little, little place. But that's the deal. I've got to jam everything here and then we can put this truck together and take it down there for the guy to paint. And, and then if it's, you know, if it's three months, well, it's in his way, not mine. So it's not like I don't have anything else to drive. That's fine. So now what's going to happen today? There's a lot of things going to happen today. Uh, I'm going to finish up. Well, uh, you'll see. You'll see in the video. So let's just... Uh, just get with it well in the last video we left off with uh, just you've had just having mounted this compressor and uh, so now before I run this thing outside I'm gonna try and firm things up a little bit you can see I've just got this tacked together and I need to make a, a little bit of an adjustment um, I've got to go that way about three sixteenths. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see that 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 pulley does not quite line up. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, three sixteenths of an inch that way. So uh, let's get busy and do that. And then I'll firm all this stuff up. I need to tack that again before it breaks down there. Uh, just got a couple of real small tacks on there. You know, I've finally learned how to tack weld. Um, used to when I tack, I call it a tack when I lay out a bead about four inches long and a half inch wide. And that was a tack. But uh, one other thing too, couple guys commented and uh, they said they were kind of worried about this out here putting uh, excessive strain on the, on the bearing you know first of all I don't think so this is a big heavy cast iron piece man this thing is a lot of momentum and I don't I don't know I just don't think this little pulley is going to put that much stress on it i think something's going to fail out here where i got it bolted on before this bearing fails now that's just my take on it because i know how heavy this is and but at any rate the guys who mentioned that yeah it's a legitimate concern i'm sure and uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna let you guys worry about that because since I had that open heart surgery and a five-way bypass, I don't worry about nothing. So, uh, so you guys can be my surrogate uh, warriors, and you can worry about this bearing. And uh, and I'll just, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm going to drive this thing 100 miles a day. But uh, if it don't work out, if something happens, I've got a couple extras. I got extra water pumps and uh, whatnot. But um. The thing is, too, about the 702, which is essentially cubic inch wise, it's two of the 351s. And, and they're, uh, well, I won't say they're common, but there's a lot of them around. The parts are available for them. So uh, you can order, I think there's like 12 different components that'll interchange on these uh, 702s to, to the uh, smaller V6. And plus, I've got two of these anyway uh that's that's another story but anyway you guys go ahead and worry about this for me and uh, that way i can uh i can just move on and i know it's in good hands i trust you guys with my worrying so you can handle that for me and i'll just get on with uh i will adjust it so the belt's not terribly tight um as tight as it needs to be to turn the compressor and that might be a little more that might have to be a little more tight than say a uh, you know a power steering pump or something because there's some 
there's some uh yeah look, there's some resistance with this thing but let's do that let's go ahead and and uh there's one way to find out right so let's get this thing adjusted and get that bell lined up and get all this firmed up and then my underplate here my bracket is just tacked on there and i'm gonna I, I can see that that's gonna work out okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and buzz a couple more welds on that and maybe I'll do that before I do any adjusting so I don't break the whole thing off. Got to put my reservoir, my little reservoir tank back up here. I had that out of the way trying to figure out if I can make that compressor fit in this area. Like that, that area. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll become a, a hand model or something. Yeah. So let's, uh. Let's get that done, uh, and then before I fire this thing up and take it out, I'm going to remove the belt because uh, I don't want to run this compressor without oil. I mean, it's got oil in it, but it's supposed to be pressurized, so let's, uh, let's not run it without oil, and yeah, that's all there is to it. All right, get in, sit down, shut up, and hang on. Well, that's looking pretty good. Um, I will have to tighten that belt just a little bit, but actually, you know, I may have gone just a tad too far with that. Uh, which is, that's good. That tells me I've got enough adjustment to get it really accurate. And yeah, you know, maybe I'll just go ahead and do that for now. Boy, I'm liking it. I really am. Yeah, I will have to tighten that belt up, but uh, as far as alignment, we're good. And I will tighten the whole bracket when I get ready to run it. After I get some oil, after I get some oil pressure to it, I've got to get what they're, what they're telling me a D2 governor for this thing and then we can, we can start plumbing and I'm, I'm going to do that plumbing all the plumbing back there with copper as far as a crossover between the tanks and uh, line to my gauge maybe and various things from the compressor i may run some underneath where you don't see it i may run some of that uh all that plastic hose like they use on like we use on uh airbag systems but uh everything that's visible 
be kind of cool to have it copper I believe that's what I believe So, I think this should be the any, and this should be the Audi, as far as our water goes. And we got lots of places to, to uh, collect and return water. So, oh uh, yeah, you know, a little bit of progress. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but, you know, built a bracket, a couple of brackets, and made it all adjustable. I found a belt that works. A new belt I had here. Uh, yeah, practically new. I know it doesn't have a lot of wear on it or a lot of stretch in it, so um, I'm not going to do it right now, but later on I'll, I'll loosen these two bolts and I'll slide that out and I'm going to put a couple more bolts in there too. And I'll uh, want to get this thing so I can get underneath it and I'll tack out those bolts in place so all you have to do is slide the bracket to make the necessary adjustments. All right, let's get our reservoir tank. Uh, load it back up and mount it back in place. I think that's all the welding I'm going to do today, so we can, we can put this away. Why don't you guys put this welder away while I uh, start working on something else? How about it? Yeah, that's what I thought. This little Wayland do everything. Yeah. I'm thinking down the road a ways. And I may want to take this tank and polish it up because it is brass. Tis brass. I think that would look pretty cool. I've got my hose pinked here and I don't not, not long enough to run it that way. So that's another thing I'm going to have to do is adjust it. The link on this hose, you put an elbow in it. It's gonna need a need an elbow. I don't know why it's so far. Oh, maybe this is slid over. Yeah, there we go. That'll help a little bit. Will it? Or won't it? <laughs> that don't look right. Don't look right. Looks like. Like that one way over there. That being brass, I think I might put some uh, some rubber or something underneath that to kind of soften the cushion a little. I wonder if he's got bent somehow. What the heck go fuzzies go on? Oh, looks like I slid this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're gonna get that kink out. That's not gonna work. Well, here's my, my friend Dan, Dan Didi Dan says that's that's a that's a concern for for future whaling. Okay. Yeah, we gotta, gotta deal with that. But at the moment, I think I'm ready to close the close the doghouse there and address another uh, issue on the back of this thing that we need to deal with. You know, I uh, talking about that disaster I had in the house. I had to rip up bathroom floor or tile. I had tile running throughout. Stuff's heavy. Tile. Wow. So, yeah, I ripped all that up and had to put down a new subfloor. And then, yeah, quite a process. And every little, there's so many jagged little corners. Every corner of that thing is all wanky wonky it's all wonky so 
uh, to make all these templates and I was talking about that and then go out and cut and uh, yeah I checked my phone and I walked walked a mile and a half between my house and my shop one day well that's not far enough but if I'm gonna walk that far I'd rather be further from home when I get done all right close down the doggy house Move to the real portion. I just can't do it with one hand. There we go. Piping, just piping. Another thing I got to do today before I shut down is um, get this truck on the lift and pick it up so that Harmon can block those cab corners and not have to be down on his knees. And so don't, uh, you guys don't let me forget, okay? So here's the deal. By the way, that's not where these are going to live, these gauges. But um, uh, they, they look cool, don't they? I just put them up there for safekeeping. Anyway, the way the way that I mounted these tanks, I did them so I could take them off. I could remove them in case I needed, you know, to do anything to them. It'd be easier to plumb them maybe if they're not uh, not on the truck. Parts of them anyway, putting in T's and whatnot. Um, some of them, they'll have to be mounted in order to plumb the lines and such. But uh, anyway, that's just, I thought it was a good idea to make them so they'll come off. So I did. And I didn't want to take all this bracketry off the truck every time or any time. So I just made these so they're pinched on here and you can take the bolts out and pop them off. But that allows them to move a bit. There's a little bit of, little bit of wobble in them and I don't. I don't want them doing that when I'm going down the road. I don't want them vibrating and, you know, that's just, that's going to crack the cab or something at some point. It's going to cause some damage. So, so I need to stabilize those and I could do that just by running a, oh, I don't know, a piece of square tubing across maybe from each one, top and bottom perhaps, you know, and stabilize them that way. But, you know, that's just not how we do things here at Weatherman Wires Old Iron, is it? No, we don't ever do the ordinary. And we don't do the expected. No, we always do things out of the box. So, let's get started. I'm really enjoying your channel, Mr. Dip. I don't know that you'll see this, but really like your stuff man if you don't know check out rat rods for africa uh he's a great fabricator and just a fun guy too makes great videos okay i have been out in my web my web pile <laughs> my uh it's not a web of lies it's a web of materials my friend web Brought, uh, brought all this iron over to me, a whole truckload of it. And I was out there digging around and I don't know exactly what I'm going to use yet. But boy, I sure have some options, don't I? Um, I had some stuff. I wish there was only one piece that was a little bit smaller than this and heavy, heavier gauge. And, uh, I wish there had been two pieces of that. But I've got some stuff here that's uh, strong enough, stiff enough. 
Uh, I think what I want to do is go with a solid piece across there, across that span from uh, inside, inside here, somewhere right, right in there, so it goes below this the back window, and not that you can see out of that back window, and I, I, I may just leave it like that because I'll have side mirrors. Uh, but anyway, I think I'll go across with a solid piece and then mount my uh, Decorative piece to that I want to I haven't designed it yet, but I want to Do something that's Kind of a takeoff of this, you know, I want to incorporate something that's kind of key in keeping with that That bit of uh, Artwork if you want to call it that I guess I don't know Anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to build a piece to go across there. And I, uh, man, metal is expensive. I went into town and I got a piece because I didn't have enough. Uh, well, it was heavier gauge than I really wanted. But I bought a piece and I'll show it to you. I'll, just, I'll have to back the truck up here at the door and unload it. But it's not very big. It was uh, with tax and everything I got to build. Let's see, it was... $92 or something. It's just outrageous what metal costs. So, um, thank you again, Webb, for your, your contribution. He brought me quite a load of metal to keep me going for a long time. But I needed a flat piece. Anyway, let's get crack a lack in this, my friend Shevaholic says. spread them just you know uh, 16th of an inch put a little bit of pressure in there that would uh, really firm them up I'm thinking that's what I think but what do I know 40 and a half will be a forced fit and I think that's what I want I want to force force them apart just you know 16th on each end and I think that'll make it fit real tight, real nice. That's what I think. And let's use this little scribe and get fairly precise with this measurement, this cut. I said 40 and a half. I'm gonna go just a little bit long. 40 and a half will be a 
a forced fit, but 40. I'm going to go just a little bit long and make it a little bit tighter fit. All right, let's chop this off. Okay, let's clearance for the weld. Make sure I get it on the right side. Let's clearance, clearance for the weld in that, that crack, that angle. Both tanks will have to come off at one time, but I don't see a problem with that. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Jim Dandy to the rescue. Got my light up there. I like to have, I like to have really good light when I'm on it, don't you? <clears throat> yeah. that little piece of metal what's that about four by four 93 buck 92 dollars and change why don't you guys jump in there and turn this rig around and i'll be over here waiting and i'll help you unload it heavy piece. I may just bring the plasma cutter over here and slice off what I need. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrestle it around. Get it over there. The metal wrangler. <laughs> Steel whisperer. Well, that was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Ah. Let's put this old truck in the gear. It's flopping around on me. A little scribe on that and try and decide how wide I need to make that. I'm just flying naked on this one, you know, just pulling numbers out of my head as I go. I'm gonna fire up my CAD program. Well, I tried the GLAD, the GLAD program, the GLAD uh, a garbage lid is aided design, but it's too, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's too tight. It's to be less, just a, just a gradual sweep. I think what we're gonna to have to do is just uh, find center and then freehand it in and fold it in half. Freehand it in, cut one side, fold it in half, cut the other side. And then uh, Bob's your uncle. Or ant, perhaps, nowadays, you know? Who knows? Bob might be your ant. The way the world goes. Yeah, I got that sweep just about where I want it now. So 
I think I'll just trace that out by hand, but at first I gotta find center and, and well, I'll get back with you. Well, let me done up and told you what I'd done up and gone and went and did. Harmon assigned me a lot of homework today before he left. And you know, I didn't do it right after school like I should have. I put it off, you know, and and I changed into my play clothes and then I just started playing. And I've been playing with this thing over here and I I didn't get my homework done. So now, you know what that means? Now I'm gonna have to get up early in the morning and try to finish my homework before he gets here. Um so I think I'm just going to, yeah, I got to shut this down. He wants this thing out of here. So I'm going to have to either pull it out right now or early in the morning. I think I'll do it in the morning. And I've got a big tarp out there and I'll tarp everything down. I'm going to pull this stuff off the top because that's not going to tarp very well. And I don't want to take any risk of doing any damage to either one of those pieces. This will cover the whole thing, and then some. You guys, you guys remind me. Guys, remind me now before I take that dirty dozen out before I fire it up. Remind me to take that belt off that compressor. You know what? I know you won't. You'll forget. So I'm just gonna do it right now. Hey, good morning, guys. It's about uh, 6:30. Yeah, and Harmon will be here in about 15 minutes. He shows up early. Um, so I gotta get, so I gotta get this truck out of here and get set up so he can do the final blocking on the hood. Bedside, one fender. Um, All right, let's uh, get this thing out of here. That's all there is to it. Creativity and my fabrication got interrupted. Come to a screeching halt. Because, of course, this truck has priority. And tomorrow we get to jam some stuff. I went and bought the paint yesterday, day before. And these two boxes here is two thousand uh, dollars. Harmon has got this thing just about ready. To, well, we're going to jam the back side of that tomorrow, and uh, that fender at least. And I hope the doors. And then uh, the next time he's here, we'll do these door jams. I'll move this truck over here. I think I mentioned earlier I did not want to paint in my shop, but I just have no choice. I just have to get it out of here. Uh, I need to get my work truck in here. It needs service. I'm going Tuesday to pick Victor up in Seattle. Um, Harmon will be here working, but i got to run and get Victor. And I had a client call, and he's got 5,000 trees ready to graft. So, yeah, I just... Uh, I have to put a screeching halt on the dirty dozen for right now, but anyway, old weather's not going anywhere. Weather wires, this old iron is still here. And I'll be back as soon as I can, fellas. So, uh, 
Until I see you again, you know I sure do appreciate you and thank you for stopping by. We'll see you soon right here on Weather Myers Old Iron.